Yes, look, we had a, a, uh, a community picket down at North Quay in Fremantle uh, in attempt to delay the loading and unloading of a Zimline vessel uh, this weekend just gone. So essentially the, the Port Authority and Zimline and the police were obviously aware of the attempts to delay Zim in, in Sydney and Melbourne. Uh, the, the published time, arrival time of the vessel um, was changed on numerous occasions and, and we suspect the times given were basically inaccurate. So, I mean, that just poses its own questions about a state-owned um, instrumentality um, playing around with these things. Uh, but anyway, uh, in any case, it actually worked to our advantage. So on at least two occasions, we believe the vessel was delayed um, and then the community, but it had to come in eventually and then the community picket uh, mobilised on the Saturday uh, for the change of shift at three o'clock and for the change of shift at 11 o'clock in the evening. Uh, so our calculation was essentially that if uh, if we could prevent or convince the workers not to not to go to work, uh, then uh, you know no, no work could happen for the subsequent eight hours. So essentially, there were community pickets for those critical windows uh, around um, two thirty to three thirty in the afternoon and ten thirty to around eleven thirty in the evening. Uh, and the really positive news is that. Um, all but a handful of workers did, did not go to work. So essentially those workers re, uh, respected our community picket line or at the very least recognised that it was, you know, it was not their job to put themselves in harm way and try and bu bust their way through and all that sort of thing. And because of that, the police in turn um, didn't have the same, you know, basis to, to, um, to pull us aside, you know. There was no one to escort through the community picket line. I mean, they could still have moved against us, but in the end they didn't. So... We're pretty confident that that vessel, uh, the loading and unloading of that vessel, was delayed for at least 24 hours, uh, which would have cost Zim uh, quite a lot, actually. Sure. Well, look, in the first instance, it's an Israeli company, and um, all the Israeli businesses um, need to be targeted as part of the boycott divestment sanctions campaign, um, which is, is an international campaign called for by Palestinian civil society in an attempt to put pressure on Israel in the first instance, just to respect international law and stop killing and ethnically cleansing Palestinians. And then, of course, in the longer term, to actually push for a peace based on justice um, in all of historic Palestine, Israel. So Zim, is, as I said, is an Israeli shipping line. But furthermore, uh, it's, it's a particularly potent um, symbol as well because the CEO of Zim line has openly said uh, that his company will be mobilising its asset to support the Israeli uh, war effort. Um, so anyone, if anyone just thinks, oh, well, this is just some little shipping company just innocently transporting containers from you know, Fremantle to Singapore or something like that, um, it may be doing that, but it's doing a lot more. Uh, and so from the point of view of the BDS campaign, it was entirely appropriate to, to, to target Zim uh, and we'll be doing it again. Yeah, look, I mean, I, I, I don't know exactly what, what discussions the, the union leadership has had, had with the membership, but I'm sure um, the, the Maritime Union has done more than most unions to educate its members about the realities of the, the horrific violence that's happening uh, in Gaza and to the Palestinians more generally in the historical context. Um, and so, and, and I'm sure that's helped you know, helped uh, convince workers that they that they shouldn't take it upon themselves to sort of push out, push push us out of the way. That would have been the worst case scenario from our point of view. You know, workers just saying, "Look, you know, I've got the right to you know um, go to work and, and try to drive over the top of us, you know, um, and put us in themselves in, in in harm's way and all that sort of stuff." You know, um, it was quite the opposite. And just as an aside, there was a Channel New Channel Nine news reportage of of our community picket led off with a claim that uh, protesters and port workers had come to blows. Good evening. Port workers and protesters have come to blows in Fremantle during a dockside demonstration. Um, which was just an outright lie. I mean, there was, in fact, there was very little interaction, uh, almost no interaction between the community picket and, and, and wharfies because they weren't, you know, the wharfies didn't try to cross our picket line. They kept, they, they stayed away. Simple as that. So they, they weren't even heated words, let alone come to blows. So it was a, it was a classic case of... Um, of basically capitalist media just writing the headline before that before the event had even happened 
But more recently, you know, Christy Kane, who was a former WA uh, Maritime Union Secretary and now National Secretary uh, of the CFMU, uh, spoke, as some, uh, as some people be aware, at the Melbourne rally, uh, very vehemently and very for- forcefully. I want to call out some people because I don't believe the union movement has done enough. I want to call out the leaders of the ACTU, which I'm an executive of. I want to tell them this that we want you to organise, organise, and organise again a union rally, one that brings them together, one that brings them together. From Sally McManus, Sally McManus, understand Sally, we need you, we need you at these rallies, we need you calling for peace. Mr Albanese, get off your knees, and stand up. Yeah. Demanding both that the union movement as a whole um, speak out on this issue and support uh, in, in an immediate um, ceasefire um, and, and do more and more than that. Uh, and, but similarly also um, put the same pressure or the same call on Anthony Albanese. Um, in fact, people at Melbourne will know he called on Albanese to get off his knees uh, and oppose genocide. So that's, um, I think that's very potent, you know, not just for the union, not, not, not just for the Maritime Union and the CFMEU, uh, for the members of that union, but in terms of the union, uh, union, uh, union movement as a whole. I mean, you know, to, to, to put pressure on Albanese to do the right thing, this movement is going to need to spread uh, through, you know, wide sectors of the society, uh, including in the union movement. Um, so it was a fan- fantastic, uh, it was fantastic that, that Christy Kane spoke at the Melbourne Rally, no question about it. Yeah, look, sure. Unions for Palestine's only just been formed in the last two weeks, really. Um, and I, I suppose it's an expression of the fact that there's a lot of people who want to have been to the big rallies for for Palestine um, and and want to continue to turn up to those rallies. I mean, there's uh, it's probably the same in most cities. We've had a um, we've had a, a mass protest in the centre of Perth uh, every weekend for six, seven weeks in a row. Um, but people want to do more than just that, you know, and find other ways um, to push to push the campaign. In, into broader layers of Australian society. And so, you know, Unions for Palestine um, was, you know, was has been initiated, I think, in Melbourne first, but a WA group has, has, has been set up and it's drawn in unionists from, you know, from a whole range of different unions, overwhelmingly just rank and file members. Um, in some cases, they're, they're in unions like the uh, Maritime Union, which is, you know, doing more than most unions. And in other cases, they're unions that aren't, that aren't doing very much. But they're unionists who are, who are united by the, the view that this, this, this struggle, this cause, this story has to be taken into the union movement with or without the leadership. You know, um, we have to shift Australian workers and their union on this question. And we're not waiting for anybody. Um, and if union leaders that, that the, the more union leaders that, 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 that help that, the better. Um, the ones that don't, well, we'll have to drag them along. So it basically started off with uh, an action last Thursday outside the office of Patrick Gorman, who's the federal member uh, for, for Perth. Uh, so Labor federal member. Uh, and so that was that was a. Um, like a speak out style protest uh, outside Patrick Gorman's office um, involving probably about 40, 50 uh, rank and file unionists calling on Gorman to actually, um, and all of the, all, all of the Labor Party uh, members of federal parliament to, to put pressure on Albanese to, to do the right thing and just call for a ceasefire. That's the bare minimum we could ask of a government that, that is sincere about human rights. And then, but right from the outset, um, we, you know, we were aware of the Zim, uh, the Zim ship uh, company would be coming to Fremantle. That Fremantle is on, is, is on the, um, you know, is, is is on the circuit that Zim does, and so started planning, planning for the for, for the for the community picket that we carried out. So it's, um, yeah, the the group's been growing. There's probably, you know, twenty plus people attending the meetings. The um, there's an emergency SMS list for you know BDS actions exactly like this, and that's 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 already pushing into the hundreds. Uh, so it's a very good platform for for future action, and it's a good sort of um, you know, he- he- healthy interrelationship between Unions for Palestine and the and the um, and the other Palestine solidarity organisations um, in in Bulu, Perth, notably Friends of Palestine WA, and the wider Palestinian community. Look, yes, we don't know exactly why the police didn't move heavily against us. We were entirely prepared for that possibility. Um, 
I think probably they were caught a little bit off guard on the first picket. They didn't, they probably didn't expect our numbers. Um, I think even us as the organisers were a bit shocked by the numbers. It really demonstrated the fact that there are people who who want to do something um, uh, and 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 want to feel like they're making a difference. Uh, there was a much bigger police presence at the 11 p.m. Uh, community picket. They had a big bus size paddy wagon. Uh, ready to deploy, um, and we were a bit worried that under the cover of darkness and with the absence of, um, you know, mainstream you know TV crews, that they might get a bit more bit 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 rougher with us. Um, but they didn't. Now I don't know exactly why. I think there's probably two reasons. In the first instance, uh, there were no there were no workers to escort through the picket line. You know, um, so you know, obviously, if there'd been you know a queue of 30, 40 workers trying to get in. Um, that would put massive political pressure on the police, um, you know, f- from the government, from the Port Authority, from Patrick Stevedores, from Zim, from the shipping agents, uh, from the trucking companies to get us out of the way so normal business could proceed. Um, but maybe the police were just a bit pragmatic and realised that they could clear us out of the way. But, you know, the, the horse had already, you know, the, the horse had already bolted, you know. Um, there was, there was, no, was going to be no shift at work anyway. Uh, secondly, I think perhaps they, it was interesting, uh, there were two main entrances that we picketed and, and the, but the police were actually further down the road closer to the actual the gates uh, where the workforce enters to go to work and the police were much more concerned about stopping us from heading down there. It's possible that the police put two and two together and got five and, and thought that we were actually going to try and storm the wharf itself and try to physically prevent the ship from tying up or clamber on the ship or something like that. I mean that's an action you'd you'd, you'd be much more um, but much more careful about because it would attract much more serious charges for for the protesters. Um, it wasn't our intention. We our our intention was to delay loading and unloading of the ship, um, which what we did. Uh, and of course the, the the police by blocking off the um, the last leg of the access road you know, into the actual car park where the, the where the workers go themselves. Ironically, the police kind of did did our job for us, you know. By and then. Uh, we were further out on the road, further out towards the um, the turn off, the main road where Parsec traffic was. So it actually, ironically, the police actually did our job for us and it allowed us to be closer on, to the main road and get get the publicity from passing traffic as well. So, um, it's you know, but we're not naive. It's not always going to be that easy. Um, you know, building a serious um, sanctions, you know, support for, for boycott divestment sanctions, just like in the 1980s against apartheid South Africa, is going to involve plenty more twists and turns. We don't expect. Um, the police to be so um, hands off um, in future, but that's that's just you know we're we're ready for that, we're prepared for that, and that's just the nature of the campaign we're trying to build. Look, I think you know one thing that the success of this particular action shows is that we 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 need to build numbers. You know, our our, our campaign to be successful needs to be a mass campaign, one so you can um, carry out significant meaningful disruption. Um, you know, it's. You know, we might have been able to block access if just a small handful of activists had, you know, locked themselves to the front gates or something like that. Um, and, you know, that, that could have still generated good publicity for, for, for the campaign. Um, but, of course, it's far more powerful when, when hundreds of people are involved in doing it, um, because, both because they have the experience and also because the more of us there are, the less practical, politically and practically feasible it is for the police to, to arrest people. Um, so, you know, to, to, to delay that vessel for 24 hours and have no, no arrest is a fantastic outcome. It also shows just how valuable it is to, to win over support or at least sympathy or some understanding from workers at the enterprises where we're trying to conduct these BDS uh, actions. You know, the more, the, you know, as I said before, it would, have been, it, would, it would have been entirely the wrong headlines and the wrong TV imagery um, and, and the wrong experience. If, if we'd had workers trying to barge through us and say, you know, you know, get out, get, get out of the out of the way, you wrap bags, we want to go to work, you know. Um, so it's, but you know, we should draw strength from the fact that over sixty percent of the Australian population thinks Israel has gone too far, you know. Um, of course, we still need to build on that. We need to we need to increase that percentage and also deepen the understanding so people realise that this isn't isn't just Israel going a bit too far, um, but that it comes in the context of an eighty year long war on the Palestinians uh, and that Australia needs to be on the right side of the history. Whereas right now, of course, Australia is on the wrong side of history. So not only is Australia supporting uh, Israel diplomatically, um, but it's also supporting the Israeli military by intelligence feeds from from the North Gap, uh, uh, Pine Gap uh, spy base. And finally, because of arms exports. So 
you know, arms exports from Australia are quite opaque, but um, recent digging has revealed the fact that around 350 arms exports to Israel have been approved um, in the last five years and over 50 of them just in the last year. So Australia is up to its eyeballs in, in this war and it's, up, it's going to be up to us through a real live BDS campaign that we put pressure on the Australian government to shut it down. <laughs> Thank you.